Hi, I just wanted to do a quick video showing you a really annoying thing now with my home solar power system. I've just had a 15 kilowatt hour battery installed and it's really awesome and yes I've shot video on that but I haven't edited it yet because I want to get uh, some more days of data on that before I uh, finish that uh, video off but I posted some photos on Twitter and whatnot. Um, anyway so that video will come and also I'm going to do a dedicated video on how my home solar power system works because it's very complicated. I barely understand it myself and so many people do not, and no matter how many times I try and explain it, so many people do not understand exactly how it works. So I'm going to have to do a complex diagram of how it all actually uh, works and I'll explain that in a separate video. But I won't do that today. But uh, suffice to say that I've had a 15 kilowatt home uh, battery system installed for the last couple of days and it's working fantastic, but I've lost a key bit of data which um, <laughs> I'm not sure that I can easily get this data back either. Um, so I'm going to have to have a good uh, think about it. But anyway, um, here it is before I had my battery installed. So this is the 21st of uh, July here. So this was uh, five days ago. And you can see it was a perfect solar day here. Okay, this is my solar analytics system, which ties together and measures both of my independent uh, solar systems. I've got the DI, uh, the new DI string inverter system, and I've got my N phase system. They're two entirely different systems and they don't know that each other exists. So the solar analytics system is, is a, a monitoring system that allows me to monitor the total production of energy from both systems. And I've had that for like five years now and it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so perfect solar insulation day here. And you can see that I produce 5.3 kilowatts peak power there. That's from both of my systems. But let you, let's fast forward to uh, what happens after I've had my home solar battery installed because it's not an AC battery. Let's go to, let's go to today. Here we go, 26th of July. Now, um, you might think, oh, okay, this is just due to uh, weather, right? Because you see this before, right? Rarely do you get a perfect day. Here you go, right? You're getting all this, right? The sun, you know, the clouds are coming in and out and whatnot. It rains, been getting a lot of rain recently, et cetera, et cetera, right? But that's not it. We had a pretty perfect solar insulation day as monitored by my end phase system. And here's the production today from my end phase system. You can see it was a little bit overcast in the morning, but otherwise a perfect solar insulation day, okay? And I've got my array on both, my end phase array is on both sides of the roof, both the western side here and the eastern side here. So it's getting energy from both sides, uh, as is my new DI string inverter, which uh, is drawing which uh, my battery is connected to okay so perfect solar insulation day but why don't we see that over here anymore remember the end phase uh, remember the solar analytics system used to show me both systems it is because all the right this should be a perfect curve like this it's because or near it should match exactly this curve here because both um, systems have uh, pretty much an equal arrangement on panels on both the north and south, uh, north and south, east and west sides of the uh, roof. Okay, so they should be getting basically the same um, solar on each uh, system. So why are we getting this? It's because all of this, ex all of the excess energy in here was being fed into my battery okay and you can see you can pretty much see when even though i don't have the uh, at, at the moment the ability to remote monitor the battery from my lab here i've got to go do it at home um i will get that eventually but i haven't figured that out yet um you can see that basically at uh what um 12 40 around 12 35 p.m boom it started suddenly started to go back up that is when i guarantee you <laughs> is when my battery reached full and it could no longer, my DI inverter could no longer put any energy back into the, uh, back into the battery that it goes, oh, I've got to export it now. And well, it, it, well something happened here. I'm not sure what happened there, but anyway, basically <laughs> it was, was full. Okay. And then you get your regular solar insulation fall off down here as the sun vanishes, right? And it hasn't quite um, no, and we're still getting some. Really? 
at, at, at 4.30, yeah, we'd still be getting re residual light there, but it's very low. Okay, that's both systems combined, around about a kilowatt, something like that. So, yeah, um, unfortunately, I've lost my ability now because uh, to measure my total solar production because the DI inverter sucks that energy into the battery before it gets outputted from the inverter and before it gets to the mains where my current clamps for my solar analytics system is. Now, I can sh I'll be able to show you this better and I will explain it again on once I get the full diagram of how my entire system works. It's very complex. But yeah, I've lost this ability. Now, it's really annoying. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess it doesn't mean anything because really at the end of the day, the goal of a home solar storage battery is so that uh, you can get the energy during the day and you can use it at night. And then th what at the goal, the end goal of that is at the end of the quarter when you get your energy bill, how much energy less have you used and does the battery pay back, et cetera. And in the future, I can do future payback videos on that. So I guess, but from a nerd, you know, <laughs> just to a nerd, like a, a data nerd like myself who has four, Different solar monitoring systems might be five now. So I have to do another update video on that. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I've just lost the ability to now measure my total system production if it's going into the battery. And and I've done a short on my EV Vlog 2 channel here. I've also done a short showing you a cool feature of the new DI inverter where I'm actually extracting not only the power from the panels that are hooked up to the DI inverter, but also the end phase uh, um, uh, user, uh, from the end phase panels as well. So I'm sucking all of my excess energy. So that is after what the house takes. So, you know, if we turn the oven on at the house, you know, it'll, it'll put less into the battery. It'll only put the excess energy into the uh, storage battery. But once the storage battery is full, once it's reached 100%, because I charge it up to 100% every day, and then I'll discharge it to 80% just to keep the uh, longevity of the battery. It's more better if you don't 100% cycle discharge it every uh, day. Um, the actual uh, manufacturer told me that. So yeah, um, it's, yeah, yeah. I can't monitor my total solar production now. And there's no easy way to do it either. I, if I had to, I could cobble it together using data, extracting data from various systems and then cobble it all together manually. But I now don't have an automated system to tell me what my total production thing is. But I can still see, as you can see with the end phase thing, I can still see and also the DI will have this as well. It'll show me the, like the solar curve. It'll show me the production curve, but the end phase system doesn't know that I've got the DI system installed and the DI system doesn't know that I've got the in-phase system installed. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, what a bummer, huh? So I could cobble it together, but I really liked being able to see the combined, but that's a downside of having a home storage battery now with two different systems. Like <laughs> my advice, don't install two systems, separate systems like I have. They've just been cobbled together over the years, and this is what I've ended up with. And this is, I guess, the price I pay, because now I now don't have the ability to see that, but it's neither here nor there at the end of the day, um, because it's more important to know what total energy I've taken from the grid each uh, you know, day or each month or each quarter when the bill comes in. So there you go, but I just wanted to share that with you. So yes, many future videos uh, to come that will answer a lot of questions, but yeah, there's no easy way to solve this um, by re, you know, uh, moving the current clamps and stuff like that because the DI inverter's on the other side of the house to the end phase system. And even then the DI system, it's all internal, right? It's all, you've seen the teardown, right? It's all internal. The battery, the panels come in, the battery comes in and it just whoop, it just reroutes it by, literally via relays, right? It just reroutes it directly into the battery um, before it gets onto the main. So the uh, solar analytics system uses AC current clamp. So you can only measure the AC line. So yeah, I can't, there's, there's no simple way to fix this, unfortunately. I'm just gonna have to live with the fact I can't measure it. Total production with my solar analytics system anymore. Bummer, huh? Anyway, thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time.